Hi there, this is Kim, Ramblings with Kim. We're just going to get into this BYU versus Duke volleyball game. It is still going on, so let's fucking go. First of all, Mormon land. Can you see this? After a rough week, where does BYU sit now and where is it headed? Now, this has taken off in the right wing Twitter sphere. Why, you may ask? Because the right wing Twitter sphere and everything that it encompasses, including broad podcasts and mega, whatever you want to call it, and They've all become snowflakes again after teasing everybody else for, I don't know, the last umpteen years, um, has decided that this is the hill they're going to die on again. And it's no doubt they were the same ones that were yelling, Jews should die. And where, you know, that they didn't care about anybody else's feelings. And... They don't care about anybody else's feelings except for their own feelings. Now, I care about everybody's feelings until you decide you're going to overthrow an election or you're going to pick on people because of the color of their skin. That's a big no-go. Now, the people that have been contacting me on my comments I was super excited until I realized that they really didn't have any skin in the game pun intended they were just on here to be annoying they didn't even listen to my podcast so they didn't even hear the logic behind it So they didn't care about the logic. They just cared about what they wanted to believe in their own head. In fact, one of them said, oh, I guess you believe in the Easter Bunny too. What does that have to do with calling someone the N-word? Are you kidding me? I've heard people called the N-word my entire life. (laughs) but no kids put your hands over your ears right now there is no easter bunny i know it's horrible isn't it i remember when i was eight santa claus used to come to our house yes really because we're norwegian we celebrated christmas on Christmas Eve, and my grandfather dressed up as Santa Claus every single Christmas Eve, and it was magical and wonderful, and we got an actual Santa Claus, Santa Claus suit, and he would want whiskey, yes, hilarious, true story, and carrots for his reindeer, and then at eight, I opened the bathroom door and found my grandfather's clothes on the ground and it crushed me and I found out that yes Virginia there is no Santa Claus but to this one annoying individual there are black people who are still called the n-word And there are still white people that do not stand up for what's right, particularly in Salt Lake City on the BYU campus. Now, as I showed you, because you don't want to believe, you you want to believe in the Easter Bunny. (laughs) But there is an Easter Bunny So I'm here to show you that there is an Easter Bunny and since you can't think logically outside this and I'm guessing that so many others can't as well, I'm going to show you that you you have to think logically. You can't just listen to the right wing nuts, okay? 
there are some people on here that actually take the time to do research. Now, I didn't want to do a script. That's what my husband said I should do. That takes too much time. I can print up everything and I can just, I can just wing it. That's what I've done my whole entire life. I just wing it. You know, it's got me through life, got me a doctorate. I'm good to go. Life's good, right? So we had an administrator at BYU who removed thousands of LGBTQ resource pamphlets from welcome bags intended to go to new students. That was after they agreed to put them in there. But, you know, those aren't sealed, I guess. So uh, faculty and staff recoil as the school adds language explicitly requiring new hires to waive clergy confidentiality as the school adds at, on matters related to employment standards. And finally, an investigation continues into this matter versus BYU and Duke. Now, we have an opinion from, of course, a BYU professor who is LDS and white and was sitting in the stands and doesn't have a shred of decency in him, who is willing to die on this grave. But to show that I think logically, of course, it's an opinion, this is an opinion. Um, now he's saying he's trying to fairly sort out facts. And he goes, we can't discount what Miss Richardson heard, but that he didn't hear anything. And that most of the crowd didn't hear anything. Now I'm going to guess that he went around to each and every member of the crowd that he hunted down after this incident was reported and asked them explicitly to take a lie detector to find out whether or not they had heard or didn't hear whether or not someone had said something to this young lady, something that was derogatory. But as it says, it's an opinion, but his opinion is a slippery slope. So we can go on that it's his opinion that he believes they did not hear this being said. That's his opinion. Just like it's my opinion that his opinion is useless. Now, there is something that has popped up, which is uh, something very interesting on TikTok. Now, there are TikTok videos on racism at BYU and beyond, and they're called the Black Menaces. And of course, oh my gosh, everybody, right conservative, all of you on the far right, I know there is there is menacing as the Black Panthers. They're coming to take your guns. I swear to God, they really are. No, they're not. They're coming to impart wisdom and truth upon you. And I know how much you hate the truth and wisdom because you still believe in the tooth fairy. But here we go. So the first time this black BYU alumni ever heard the N-word was when they were in Temple. Yes, because that's the appropriate place to first be called the N-word. When you're in the most sacred of places, the LDS church. Not just the church, but the temple. I'm guessing the one in Salt Lake City, the big one that everybody wants to go to, 
you know, the one with Bill Maher and Religulous, he's sitting outside and they're not letting him film because they don't want any of their secret secrets out. That one, right? Um, in 1978, one of their uh, um, bishops had stated that they felt that it was appropriate that black men were not allowed to become um, members of the church or is it prophets? I'm probably going to have to add something onto this as I go along. Until then, because he likened it to children needing to learn to walk before they could run. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Because black people, obviously, in 1978, still weren't considered equal. Now, in all fairness, as I explained in my last podcast, that this gentleman doesn't want to watch because he believes in logic. He doesn't believe in listening to opposing views which I have done, which is why it's taken me this long to get this one out, because I wanted to see what was actually going to transpire from all of this uh, discourse that is going on. And the first thing that I saw after I did my podcast was the right wing doing podcasts where they're drudging up things that aren't true. Okay. I'm drinking my mini little Starlight Diet Cup. Because they don't care if it's true. And that's basically what the majority of the country has figured out. Is that the right wing doesn't care if it's true. What they do is they mold whatever's happening to fit their worldview. And we <laughs> were letting them for the time being, but we have to let that stop. And this is one of the places that we have to let that stop. But BYU is on a different plane. BYU does not believe that it's really part of our world. They believe they're in a different world that has to coexist as part of our world. That's what the LDS church is. They're just kind of looking down their noses at us. But they still fly the Confederate flag in their windows. Um, and they still look down at, you know, black people. But they still look down at white people. As I explained, my daughters live in Salt Lake City. They're very white, just as I'm very white. Um, they both have had problems when it came to employment and not belonging to the LDS church. Uh, no matter how talented they are, they start to hit a ceiling because they are not members of the LDS church. And they are not um, government employees working on military installations where that would be illegal. So I've seen it happen while they have lived there as members, as non-members of the LDS church. I've also had friends that have moved to Utah that I did not know were Mormon growing up in school that turned out to be Mormon and have seen how their lives were transformed afterwards. And it was somewhat eye-opening. And um, uh, somewhat funny. It, it, it's kind of like if you see LDS women on TikTok, um, it, it's, 
<laughs> you just have to look it up in order to be able to see how funny it is. But the whole point behind any of this is the fact that this is going on. And people want to ignore the fact that this is happening. That racism is happening at BYU. That they didn't want to do diversity and inclusion at BYU because they felt that didn't fit in with their values. Because diversity, you know, classes or, or seminars or whatever they were going to have that everyone else at every other university and college took they decided they were not going to do that. They made a conscious decision to not participate in that because they did not believe that was part of their values. They don't want diversity. They don't want people to feel like they are included. That is their values. So then we move forward a week and we have a young black woman who hears this. And who would want to be the center of a firestorm like this? Like I said, I witnessed it when I was a child, when I was in eighth grade. And the individual that I was standing up for wasn't black. He was white. <laughs> I mean, he had really curly hair like my husband does. And my husband's whiter than I am. He's like white, white, like with freckles, like my oldest daughter is, like Irish white. And curly hair. And he was being picked on by kids that were making fun of them. And I get the impression that the people in this right-wing Twitter sphere, podcast sphere, were all kids that were picked on when they were younger, or were kids that were bullies when they were younger. There wasn't anyone that was like, I don't know, somewhat logical, and maybe the class president. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there was. Maybe there was somebody that was going to, you know, I, I don't know, the University of Washington and, and political science. And I, I couldn't even begin to, to see where I'm going down this rabbit hole to find somebody that's like clean cut and wasn't a bully but wasn't picked on maybe somewhere in there, or maybe there was somebody that was picked on that, that managed to make it through and turned around and used it for good. Uh, Olivia, oh, I can't, I'm gonna have to pull up her name too and put it in the comments on YouTube. She had turned around and used the right Twitter sphere hate. I believe it was Ted Cruz that came after her. <laughs> as far as the uh, being raped, yes, because they thought that was a funny thing to joke about. Some woman being too ugly to be raped. Yeah. And she made millions for Planned Parenthood. Why? Why are we doing this? This is the same thing. Would we have done this had this been a man? If this had been a black man, I mean, I know BYU did this to black men in the past. 
but would they do it now? I, I don't understand, and I don't understand, well, I understand why this one man is doing it to me, because I'm a woman, and they're right, I'm more liberal, well, I shouldn't say I'm more liberal, I'm just not crazy. <laughs> I'm not willing to overthrow the government. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the power of the vote. And I believe that electors need to vote for who we tell them to vote for. I also believe that if BYU wants to be a part of the NCAA, they need to participate as if they are part of the NCAA. That means they need to take diversity and inclusion seminar classes. That means they need to be held accountable for this, whether they think they could find someone or not. Whether they look through their video or not. As my husband so eloquently put it to me, Nixon, we couldn't find 18 and a half minutes of that tape. Now, I know, just in this little bit of me trying to put on this podcast, it is just so fledgling that you can very much turn down the volume and turn up the volume in different areas that you can maybe just maybe make it so that you can't hear something. You can also definitely leak the whole two hours worth of footage to someone and pretend like it's not coming from BYU, but from a fan. And all of a sudden, oh, this fan didn't catch it on their footage. So it must not be true. Or the, all these all these people around them didn't hear it just because they believe it and they are too they don't want to say it they're not going to say anything they're not going to say they're not going to point them out because they believe it wake up wake up NCAA South Carolina canceled their first basketball game against BYU. Oregon, Oregon Ducks, my Oregon Ducks are playing BYU. Why? Except for money. They want the money, the broadcasting dollars. It's not good enough. We have Nike money. We don't need broadcasting dollars. Everything. I am sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Pac-12, ESPN. Whoever else has contracts with BYU needs to shut it down until they stop believing that they live in a different world than we live in. Because right now we're playing football against space aliens who do not live in or on Earth. Is that what you're telling me? ESPN, is that what you're telling me? NCAA, is that what you're telling me, Pac-12? Are we playing space aliens? Are, are we playing them? Seriously, are we playing space aliens? Now, my husband's in here right now, and he's going to get mad at me. But last night, I rented the movie Nope. And I'm just here to say, if we're playing space aliens, let me know. Because cause, cause I got some questions about these space aliens that I kind of want to ask them. Like, is Area 51 actually in Salt Lake City? Or are there, like, you know, I don't know, in the temple 
underneath is there um, a, a, a actual aliens? Do we have flying saucers underneath Salt Lake City? Do we have magnetic fields that are under there? I mean, come on. Space aliens in Salt Lake City. Please. They don't believe they live in this world. That means they can't play football in this world. If they're winning, is it because they have some space alien technology that we don't possess? I'm serious now. Come on. Let's get over this. We're done. BYU, out. They're space aliens. We're done. That's my conspiracy theory of the week. BYU are space aliens. They do not exist in this world. They should not be allowed to play in the NCAA, the Pac-12, anywhere else. They should not be able to play in any kind of conference whatsoever. We should go along, basically act as if they are aliens, study them, and use them for scientific research, and go along our merry way. And that's all I have to say today. I am going to ensure that my children are okay living with space aliens. And no, I'm not crazy. They're the ones that have said it. They're the ones that have said they are space aliens. And to the man who asked if I believe in the Easter Bunny, no. But apparently the LDS Church believes that they're space aliens. So who am I to say anything different? This is Kim with Ramblings with Kim. Let's see what the next week brings. Hopefully they don't stop, start dropping things on us. Goodbye.